This presentation provides you with an introduction to OPC. We'll provide an overview for OPC, we'll cover a case study, then we'll cover the different OPC specifications, and we'll end this presentation with an overview of the most popular OPC specification called OPC Data Access. So what did we have before OPC? How did this thing actually come about? Why is it even needed? Well, what we found is that a whole bunch of applications each had their own driver to go to their own data source and there were, as a result there were a whole bunch of proprietary data paths. In the plant, turns out that there was very, very little integration. And so some vendors saw this and they said, boy, you know, we have an opportunity here. So they would go to plants and say, you know, we have the best historian in the world or we have the best HMI in the world. So why don't you just take your data and put it inside my application and plants followed. Plants um, bought these applications en masse and the vendors did extremely well but as the plants soon found out the data was actually locked. In other words every time that they wanted to produce a trend or a report or they wanted to export the data to some other application they had to go back to the vendor to the same vendor every time and pay some more money. Well, that was one problem. And the second problem was, if the plant did find a great trending tool or a great reporting application, they still couldn't connect that reporting or trending tool back to the original data source. And the reason is that the data was in a proprietary format and there was no way to extract that data. Here is a particular example. Uh, from a company that I was working with. They had a couple of different PLCs that were connected to an HMI. They then expanded the plant, they added a third type of PLC and connected it to a second HMI. Then they took the data from the first HMI and put it into the second HMI. Of course the question is why don't you go directly to the PLCs? And one of the answers was well it was easier to go to the HMI. Then they added a computer maintenance management system, a CMMS, and because they didn't have the drivers to go to the HMIs, they ended up entering all of the data manually. So they would actually write down the data that they would see on the HMIs and type it into the computer maintenance management system. Well, after that, they bought a historian, and they actually took the data from the HMIs and put it inside the historian. Then they added some analytical tools and they put the data from those um, analyzers directly into the historian. From there, they went to an enterprise resource planning application, uh, kind of like an SAP or a JD Edwards or Oracle. That's where all the invoices are made. Um, and of course, they didn't have the driver to go to the computer maintenance management system. So again, that had to be done. Uh, the data had to be transferred to the maintenance system manually. And here is the source of the problem. Number one, where is my data? If I have some data, maybe on a, on a tank that's inside my refinery, where's that data? What PLC do I get it from? What control system do I get it from? What is it called? Because in different PLCs, they may be using different naming conventions, and everybody's got a different way of calling the, uh, a different way of referring to the data. What happens when there are changes? So when there's a change in one PLC, how does the change management get propagated? How does the change go from the PLC to the HMI to the historian to the enterprise resource planning application to the computer maintenance management system? How is this all done? So it was due to these problems that OPC came about. And in fact, the vision of OPC is to standardize on a particular technology and not a product. There are no more proprietary formats for data or data paths and as a result you get completely universal connectivity. Here's an example. Uh, the vision of OPC is that once your data is converted to OPC, every application can start speaking with every other application. It's uh, just as if in this particular presentation we all standardize on speaking English. So as I'm presenting this in English, you can then go back to uh, your own people, be it in uh, French or in Spanish or Portuguese or German, and you can talk to your own people. You know, they may have questions and they may ask you these questions in their own language. You will then take that question 
and send it back to me in English and you will act as this language translator, just like OPC. In fact, OPC is really no more than a language translator.